Well, welcome everybody to IAG Trade Talk, and uh, we're very delighted to have our friend uh, Jason Ada here from Spring Owl um, Asset Management Company. Uh, he is the CEO of, of Spring Owl, but more importantly, uh, Jason has got uh, 26 Capital, the uh, uh, SPAC company that was looking to take uh, Akata Manila Public, and maybe is still looking to take Akata Manila Public. Um, Jason, welcome to Trade Talk. Andrew, thanks for having me. Very good to see you. We definitely plan to uh, move forward with uh, Okada Manila and Universal and both part, both of us, both uh, our, our business and uh, Universal's business uh, are, are, are forging forward and, and plan to uh, merge and list um, on the NASDAQ. Very good. Well, obviously, uh, you'd have to be hiding under a rock not to have been up to date with what's going on at the moment with Akata Manila. Pretty amazing scenes, amazing video we've all seen of this sort of forced takeover by Kazuo Akata. I mean, where were you when you heard the news and what's your reaction to it? Well, um, when I heard the news, I was sitting at my desk and, uh, and my reaction to it is it's totally illegal. And I believe that Universal will be back you know, in control of the property soon. Uh, this is, uh, you know, not an issue about ownership. Nobody's really questioning who owns the property. It's owned by Universal and Universal's um, largest shareholder is uh, uh, the son of Kazuo Okada, who is totally against his father's actions and supportive of Universal. Um, so this isn't an ownership issue. This is an issue of management. It's illegal. And it's something that I do think, uh, I think Universal will be back in control soon. And, and where's the listing process at in your mind? Because that's what you guys were moving forward with. How has this affected your plans? So we're, we're, we, we are not going to let Kazuo Okada's illegal takeover affect what should be a moment of celebration in the Philippines. Uh, the listing of, of, of this company will create the largest publicly traded Philippine company on NASDAQ, um, UERI, um, you know, Universal Entertainment Resorts International will be bigger even than when the Philippine long distance telephone company listed in the U.S. This is this is really, you know, a, a, a gigantic event, uh, capital markets event for the Philippines. And we're not going to let Kazuo Okada try to disrupt it, which is very clearly what he's trying to do. Well, that's actually news to me. I didn't realize that it would actually be the largest uh, Philippines company ever ever listed on a on a U.S. exchange on any exchange. That's 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 pretty amazing, and that's a wonderful uh, you know, soft power advertisement for the Philippines around the world, and a lot of investment going into the Philippines at the moment. Uh, what about the chilling effect that this will have potentially on investment? from you know foreign direct investment into the Philippines. A lot, a lot of companies, a lot of gaming companies interested in investing in the Philippines at the moment because of what's going on in Macau at the moment, the bounce back of the market. I mean, what, what's, what's your view of that? There's such a great story to tell right now as it relates to the Philippines, it's the fastest growing gaming market in Asia. Um, it'll be a bigger market, of course, this year than Macau because of uh, you know the, the restrictions of travel. Uh, but it has got amazing product. Uh, it, the returns on capital from an investor's perspective, are among the best uh, in the gaming industry, and so and 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 you look at you know the investment um, that's been made over the last several years and the product that's been created. Um, it's it's largely unknown, but it's really super exciting. So you're right. This should be a celebratory moment for the Philippines, showcasing their gaming industry uh, that has become one of the most important in the world. And in addition to that, showcasing Okada Manila, which employs 5,000 people, which is one of the showcase assets in the entire country and expose uh, the country, the hospitality industry, the business climate uh, to the NASDAQ investors, to the US investors. And it's a great story to tell. Um, both myself and Universal are just not going to let Kazuo Okada try to disrupt that process. Well, it's very true what you say. I mean, sometimes when we we talk to investors and others around the world about the Philippines, and they sort of have an impression in their mind of perhaps what the Philippines was 15 or 20 years ago, and they don't realize there are multi-billion dollar, beautiful five-star integrated resorts there in Entertainment City. And, and um, you know, that, that that's a big aspect to what's um, going on here. Jason, can I ask you, I mean, we, we've seen some pretty dramatic video uh, you know, with, with, with 
physical pushing and shoving and the lights being turned out and, uh, you know, th this kind of stuff. Have you ever seen that before in your corporate life? Uh, nobody's ever seen anything like it. It's a complete disgrace. It's totally illegal, and, and it needs to get rectified. Um, you know, this uh, status quo anti-order um, was not uh, an order to take over management of the property. In fact, that order is pending in the Supreme, uh, in the Philippine Supreme Court, and it was not granted, uh, despite the fact that uh, Mr. Okada and his uh, group um, uh, attempt, they are attempting now to take over management of, of the property. But you know, the videos are shocking. Uh, the treatment of executives at Universal, the treatment of women, well, you know, very prominent women in, in the Philippine legal community um, being blocked, pushed. Um, you know, it, it's just an absolute disgrace. What can you and, and others do about that right now? What practical steps can you, can you take? Can you put pressure on the Philippines government? What legal steps and other commercial avenues can you take to, to, to do something about this disgrace, as you put it? Well, um, so Universal is leading the process. Universal will be the, the largest shareholder, obviously, in our combined company. Um, they've filed criminal complaints. They've filed the second Supreme Court motion. There is there are other um, legal um, channels that uh, are are you know in the process of uh, being pursued aggressively, uh, as you can imagine. But uh, as I said in the outset, this everybody knows this is illegal. Um, I believe Universal will be back in control of the asset uh, very soon. And beyond that, I, I don't really want to comment uh, what I what else I may know. Sure, that's un understandable. Just, just two more questions. Just want to ask you about the fact, I mean, every entity, every person in this whole thing seems to have the name of Carter in it. There's uh, obviously, the, there's estrangement in the family there. Mr. Ricardo seems to have lost control of OHL. Ricardo Holdings, the ultimate company which controls Universal and then down to TRAL and then down to TRLEI. It, it's complicated. It's complicated for people to understand with all the different entities and names and, and languages. Uh, we've got Japanese, we've got English, we've got Tagalog all in there. I mean, what to what extent do you think this contributes to confusion around what's going on at the moment? Is it difficult for you guys to explain uh, what's going on? And do you think the estrangement within the Akata family itself is a factor here? Because as you say, the son has actually got, Tomohiro Akata has got more of the ultimate controlling entity that controls the whole thing from the top down than uh, Mr. Akata himself. Any comments on any of that? Uh, Tomohiro Okada. Um, is a controlling shareholder. He's supportive of uh, Universal Board and therefore, you know, by default, supportive of our transaction. I don't think there's anything confusing about all the um, legal action that uh, Kazuo Okada brought through the um, Japanese court uh, and legal system and lost all the way up to the very top, you know, the highest uh, Supreme Court. Um, so there's definitive judgments in Japan. This is a Japanese company. This is a Japanese controlled business. And um, there was a very small um, uh, grant of a status quo anti-order um, that, that, that really was, uh, I think, you know, misrepresented um, to the gaming commissions, misrepresented to the people that were involved in that hostile takeover. I give everybody involved the benefit of the doubt. Uh, the, the unlawful um, act here was uh, conducted by Kazuo Okada. Fair enough. My, my last question to you is, you say that the listing is proceeding, but you know, do, do, can you just give us a little bit more colour around that? I mean, with with what's going on at the moment and this kind of uh, dramatic footage and so forth, how, does, that, does, does that really affect the US, you know, the process on the US side? Are there regulatory concerns? Uh, there, there is, the reality at the moment is that um, Kazuo Okada and his people are physically in the property, running the property, whether that's right or wrong. Uh, obviously, you think it's wrong. I mean, how does that affect the practicality of moving ahead with the listing? Uh, so, you know, we, we've we obviously um, thought and, and, and discussed this at great length with Universal, who will be the largest, a 90%, Universal will be a 90% owner of the combined company that will trade, you know, as, as Universal Entertainment Resorts International. And so... Um, to a large extent, this is their decision. Uh, they're bringing this listing to market at a $2.6 billion valuation. You couldn't build, in my opinion, half the building that was constructed in, in Manila for that valuation, especially given where labor costs are today, where materials costs are, steel, 
concrete wiring. So the valuation is extraordinary relative to other gaming markets. And in addition, we look at what Solaire did uh, in, in EBITDA or cash flow from operations in 2019, $430 million in EBITDA. So the Okada Manila is twice twice the size. And of course, the post-pandemic uh, travel recovery in Asia is going to be extraordinary. So it, you know, this is a super valuable asset and business. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's better than a pot of gold. Someone's trying to steal it. It's, what they're doing is unlawful. And Universal will be back in control of the asset soon. Well, that was Jason Ada of Spring Owl uh, Asset Management. He's the CEO and, of course, taking Okada Manila uh, public via his 26 Capital SPAC. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on IAG Trade Talk. Bye for now.